All right, for the next step of the problem, we're going to go through and now find the corresponding eigenvectors for the two eigenvalues that we found in the previous example. So the first thing we're going to do is go in, and we have to solve for each eigenvalue the following system. We're going to solve a minus lambda i times some unknown vector v is equal to the zero vector. And then in doing so, we're going to now do this for each value of lambda. So for lambda 1 equals negative 1, that's going to be a minus negative 1 times the identity matrix. And again, we're solving this times v equals 0. And you'll notice that when we distribute this negative 1 into the identity matrix and we're subtracting it, we're actually adding 1. So we're going to end up with our matrix 5, 3, negative 6, negative 4, minus a matrix with negative 1 on the main diagonals. And then when we subtract negative 1, of course, we're actually adding 1. So this is going to turn into adding 1 along the main diagonal. So we'll have actually a 6 up here. This is going to stay a 3. This is going to stay a negative 6 down here. And then this number, of course, changes to a negative Three. And you will now notice that this matrix here, when we solve for it, and again this is times some vector v is equal to zero, we can just look at doing the row operations on a simple two by two matrix. Because that third column is zeros and doing a bunch of operations on zeros keeps them all zeros. So again we have our six and our three, our negative six and our negative three. And what we're going to do is go in then, and we're going to do the simplest row operations possible. Now, you can actually do this if you want on a graphing calculator, but it actually takes more time usually to type this in and do the operations on a calculator than to do it by hand. That's not true of 3x3 three three systems, but it's definitely true for our 2x2 two two systems. So we're going to first want to get this into the form that's simplest as possible. So we're going to take the row 2 and add the row 1 and put the result into row 2. Up here, we will go through and we will take 1 sixth of row 1 and put the result into row 1. So in doing so, our new matrix that we get is going to be a 1, a 1 half, and then for the other, when we add them, we get a row of zeros. And this row of zeros is very important because this is our sign that we're doing the problem correctly. We always want to have a non-trivial solution to this. And if we just got the identity matrix, then that would just be a zero solution. So we want something besides zero to solve the zero problem. So the next thing to do is now multiply this times our vector v. So again, we've got our 1, our 1 half, our 0, 0 times v, which we'll now write in components as v1, v2, is equal to the zero vector, zero, zero. If we now multiply this out, this says that 1 times v1 plus 1 half times v2 is equal to zero, or v1 is equal to negative 1 half of v2. So when we build our vector v back, we're going to have our two components, v1 and v2, which is going to have our negative 1 half v2 in the first spot for v1, and v2 will just stay the same. We can then factor out a v2 from that vector. We have negative 1 half, and we've got 1. Now, technically speaking, this is an eigenvector, but we always prefer to have a simple eigenvector without fractions. And keep in mind, again, that any multiple of an eigenvector is an eigenvector. So we're going to actually multiply this vector by 2 so that we've got negative 1, 2 as our corresponding eigenvector. And again, that corresponds to lambda 1 equals negative 1. In the next video, we'll go ahead and find the eigenvector corresponding to 2.